afternoon, everybody. My name is Ken Woods. I'm the president of Black Oak Brewing Company, and I have the pleasure to welcome you to the uh, fifth annual Pioneers panel. And where's my beer? I think it went. <laughs> it worked. This is so cool. Thank you. Yeah. I'll finish this one in just a moment or two. Um, a very long time ago, I opened up a brewery in 1999 thinking, it's going to be so easy. People are going to love beer. They're not going to drink anybody else's beer. They're just going to drink my beer. And I see that in other people's eyes right now. And one thing you really didn't think about is there's all kinds of competition. There's all kinds of beer taxes. There's all kinds of regulation. And there's all kinds of things you just don't know, despite how much stuff you read, despite how much other work you put into your business plan. So in approximately 2002, uh, the Ontario Craft Brewers was formed and put together. Uh, I'm an original founding member, and I would not be here today without the Ontario Craft Brewers. I would not be here today without all the fantastic work that John Hay has done. So in a very brief summary, uh, beer taxes for Ontario have been moved down to a very reasonable amount for taxes, as well as excise duty has also been brought down to a very reasonable amount as well. I can remember around the 2002-2003 time frame looking at my bank statement with 59 cents sitting in my account and saying, how am I going to pay my beer tax? How am I going to pay my suppliers? How am I going to survive? And you know, you're just working with duct tape and trying to get things done. But nowadays, we've got so many new brewers out there. There's about 12 to 15 of us when we started off. And we were kind of a cool little thing. We weren't really sure who was doing what and trading beer with each other and trading stories and uh, complaining about things every now and then as we want to do after one or two beers. And the thing that binds us together is beer. So throughout the Ontario Craft Brewers, uh, John Hay has been instrumental in guiding us and keeping us focused uh, because we've got beer and that sort of tends to disfocus us. And there's all kinds of things we really want to do. And there's all kinds of things we really could do but we can't do everything. So with John's help and a lot of emails and a lot of spreadsheets, I like <laughs> spreadsheets and I was just stunned at the complexity and the detail that John goes down to these things. And so I'm still trying to get through some of the ones that came through in 2005 to 2008, uh, but a lot of really good information came out there and a lot of it helped us grow and helped us establish Ontario as a really cool place to enjoy beer, to get beer out for the customers, and to grow the whole industry. So that's very, very important. Uh, the Pioneers panel is always a great uh, version where we hear from a lot of people who've been in the industry for a while, uh, adding the complexity to things and really making things interesting and showing off a lot of really good passion. Um, so it's all about the experience that these people have brought up here and hopefully we can share that with you today. And uh, John Hay has done a phenomenal job of keeping us focused and working with the government as a lobbyist and keeping us going in the right direction with good strategic planning. Uh, he's done meetings for us to keep us on track. He's done spreadsheets to keep us focused on things and has spent a lot of time in Queens Park as well as on, uh, doing a whole bunch of work on the, uh, on the hill up in Ottawa as well. I'm also following Christine's script and thanks for more beer, Christine. That's really going to help me out. Uh, so John Hay has done all kinds of incredible things for us. Um, he's really, really helped us go. Uh, we're going to hear from some of our voices. Uh, the first people sitting closest to me are Aldo and Noreen uh, Lista from the Old Credit Brewing Company. They're going to say a few things as well. It's a nice family-run brewing company. And the uh, nice thing about the industry is we all trade beer with each other. So it's a very cool thing with more breweries now to trade beer with each other. So I just got to get caught up in drinking down my fridge. Uh, right beside them is Cam Heaps from Steam Whistle Brewing Company, uh, founder of Steam Whistle Brewing Company, and a very long time ago, uh, he came on board, and it's always been an enthusiastic member and really helped out, and good guy to chat with as well. And uh, down on the end, we've got uh, Jeff from the All or Nothing Brewing Company, and uh, he's just sort of moved into bricks and mortar right now. He's our acting um, uh, president for the Ontario Craft Brewers, and uh, really sort of bring a lot of expertise and a lot of good knowledge and a lot of fresh vision into how we do things as the Ontario Crappers. And finally, on the very end, uh, is John Hay. Uh, so 
A uh, little bit of background about John. He is actually a, an engineer, so that sort of explains, explains the details of the spreadsheets and all the detail information you can drill down on. But he's also very, very good with numbers in terms of uh, finance and things like that. So he's got a very, very astute mind, really amazing depth of knowledge. And uh, so once again, I'm extremely grateful for all the work he's done for us. And uh, I'm going to start asking uh, uh, anybody on the panel to start uh, chipping in some stories about John. So whoever wants to go ahead first, lean in. You have all the main, you have all the great stories. Noreen? I, see, I see some notes down there, Noreen. You have, but, oh, no, uh, you no, can, no, no, You can no, start no. us off. Ladies before gentlemen. Exactly. Oh, okay. We're going back a lot of, lot of years. I guess you could tell from our hair. Not only that, but I want to say that when we first met John a number of years ago, I'm not going to say how many, uh, we were excited to know that we had someone that we could turn to, get on the phone, and it was answered. As pretty well everybody knows in the industry, I hate the computer. I feel I'm going to lose something right there, but I love to get on the phone, dial it, and there's somebody at the other end. And John, in his time, was so helpful in everything. Ken said it pretty well all. Uh, one day, I went, my bookkeeper came to me and said, Noreen, there's a big mistake in our bills. I said, what do you mean? Something's gone wrong. I don't know. We're not paying as much as we were. What happened? So we looked, and I would say, if I'm not mistaken, that government bill was down by 90%, John? A fair bit. Pretty much so, because all I saw, I saw the figure nine, and then it was nine, and I said, impossible. So naturally, I got on the phone, and I found out that through all his hard work and endeavor, he brought us down to a sum that we were able to afford. Because as Ken said, the money was going out down the drain with the beer that was coming out of the kettle. So, and I know John on a personal basis, um, what can I say? He's been great as also as a close friend to us, especially in this last year. John, thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And we hope you're no, don't go, don't go too far. I know he loves his skiing. The Christmas, the winter season is coming and he'll enjoy that. But you people out there, all you young ones, remember, we started 24 years ago. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. A lot of headaches and a lot because we were too old to get into a business as such as this. You, you are young. You have the energy. We did too. We did too. But, um, and know that there are people of the craft brewers. We are one big family, and we can ask each other, what are you doing, how are you doing, and we try to help each other. So we're here for any questions. You want to know anything? Just call us. We'll, we'll help. But we'll be, hope we can depend on our new president to be the same and be there for us and for you people. And we always believed in one thing. It's a craft beer, craft. It should be on that table like the best bottle of wine. Woo! Okay, Ken. Um, good afternoon, folks. Uh, it, it, following in Noreen's Theme, I think it is important. Um, you know, it's often when, when especially when we're younger, um, to be so full of, of energy and what's in front of us that sometimes we, we don't take a second to appreciate 
why an environment is the way it is. And this man over here, Mr. John Hay, um, has probably single-handedly done more to change the landscape of craft beer in Ontario than any human that's either come, that's, that's come ever. Um, if you were to open a beer, if you were to open a brewery 15 years ago, if you think life is challenging right now, you'd, you'd really know how miserable an environment it was from a tax structure, no matter how hard you worked or how many customers you could convince to, to believe in you. There was really nothing left on the table at the end of the day, and that makes it very challenging for, for an industry to grow, especially in, in one dominated, obviously, by uh, those big guys with the big marketing dollars. So over the years, you know, we kind of stole John. He used to uh, he used to be part of the Big Bad Wolf, uh, the government relations team over there at Molson. So when they treated him, uh, uh, I guess, in an unfavorable way, it uh, created an incredible opportunity for us because not only did we get a man who knew what was going on, he knew exactly how they thought, how they went about their government relations strategies, who the players were, how the system works, government. And he has been able to, to very effectively bring sweeping change to this industry that now means you can open a brewery and make a dollar that you then end up putting back into it to upgrade a piece of equipment or, or do something else. But um, it's changed drastically. And, any of you who've been in the industry for a bit, you know we're a pretty uh, unruly group. Um, imagine trying to herd all the different opinions in that group. Well, I, <laughs> Scott, good luck, buddy. Uh, I don't know how John's done it, really. The number of hours he's listened to, to people on the phone or in person. Because no matter how much you improve things, uh, there's usually a fair bit of angst in the room to, to try and make things even better. Um, and that makes it probably the most thankless job I, I've, I've ever seen. Um, I'll, I'll leave you with a little antidote. There was a, um, one initiative that we embarked on uh, with John's leadership, which was to go impact change at, 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 in Ottawa with regards to the excise. So in that case, he had to not only deal with, with, with us Ontario folks, but uh, a, a band from across the, uh, across the country. Anyway, when we descended upon Ottawa for our, 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 our tasting session on Parliament Hill, we, someone thought it was a good idea to, to build a... We even created an organization just for that day. I think it was the Canadian, yeah, Canadian, Canadian Association of Small Brewers. Yeah. And we built an ice sculpture to give the government as a present. So they only stayed for a drink or two, and then uh, uh, we were there after. I think John Graham from, from Churchki uh, uh, and I carried the ice sculpture out of the place. And we went down the street, and across the street from Parliament Hill, they had a, an ice sculpture art display. And we sort of implanted it on, uh, on the train, and it looked kind of seamless. Anyway, it was always, um, you know, one of the best parts about the industry is certainly the camaraderie. And uh, that's really what, what makes it so enjoyable. So, John, from the bottom of my heart and the soon-to-be bottom of my glass, thank you. You will be dearly missed. But you're not going anywhere, right? No, I'm not. All right, stay you're close. Very welcome. Cheers. I guess it's my turn now. Um, I'm obviously one of the newer brewers on this panel up here, the new guy. I've uh, been around for four years, and I had the pleasure to know John since, uh, since day one when we first started uh, getting into the beer industry. It's a new world. And so we phoned up the OCB and got a hold of John, and... John slowly shepherded us through, you gotta talk to this guy, you gotta talk to this guy. And we slowly worked our way through to where we are today, being a, a full production brewery, kind of starting from contract all the way full circle. Um, there's been a theme so far as well up here in kind of taxation. And you know, we haven't just changed taxes over the years, or John hasn't changed taxes over the years. He's really turned Ontario into the center for brewing excellence. And when you look here, I have a, a beer from Niagara College, right? we have a, a beer from Muskoka. Um, there's been multiple facets that have been touched in the industry and not just taxation. I mean, I bought beer at the grocery store the other day. That didn't exist just a couple years ago and that didn't happen on its own. It wasn't given to us. It was through a lot of hard work uh, by John to get that move forward and uh, we are forever grateful for that because it's uh, access to market that we've never had before. And as we've seen over the last couple of years, things just keep getting better and better and better. So, uh, John, thank you for the hard work. Appreciate it. And uh, 
we do really do appreciate it. Well, cheers. I mean, you could probably add that this this conference wouldn't have happened if uh, John wasn't involved because it was I think, 12 years ago or 13 years ago we wrote that uh, uh, strategic plan for the industry in partnership with the LCBO and the government and I think it really opened the LCBO's eyes to the, the potential of uh, a craft beer section. It opened the government's eyes as to the potential. Um, um, this is all a result of that. So, you know. um, you want me to say a couple of words or please keep? Sure. Yeah. The floor is yours. Now, now I got to say, we do have a nickname for John, because I was told this is supposed to be a bit of a roast, too. Oh, yeah. you, you guys so go just ahead before he opens his mouth, I was going to say our nickname for him is the Snake Charmer, because <laughs> when we go to government meetings, sometimes he can lull them to sleep with, with information. So. I, I, I was going to say, just if it's two minutes with John, that turns into 25 minutes and 15 slides so and if, countless if you, charts. If you hear the music, John, it means... Uh, yeah, we're getting the hook out for you. Keep going here, yeah, I'm just getting ready. <laughs> you know, we used to take, we'd go into meetings with Cam, mm -hmm. and I'd be yakking away, like Cam says, putting them to sleep, mm -hmm. and I'd look at all the people in the room, and no one would be looking at me, they'd all be staring at Cam, because <laughs> he was so dashing. So finally I realized, why don't we just give Cam the script, because <laughs> they're gonna be looking at him anyway, and he'll do all the work for us. And it worked really well, but I, I'll, I'll make some general comments whenever it's whenever it's time here. Do you want me to do it now or? You got the conch. Yeah. So so just I mean, you you'll get tired of hearing about me and all the wonderful things. So we'll we'll talk a little bit about um, maybe how how some of that was possible. And I am amazed at how many people actually came came. So I'm, I'm thrilled and I'm honored. And the board had a nice little event for me last night, which was really terrific. Um, the, the team that we've had and the people that we've worked with made, made really a lot of this possible. Um, and and when, when, uh, when I was with, um, with Carling and, and Fosters and Molsons, they were Canadian breweries at the time, and I was proud to be with Canadian breweries and work with them. And then into the mid-90s and late-90s, they started to basically tart them up for sale and, uh, and that's, of course, what happened. Uh, and then I was doing some other things, and I talked to um, Deputy Minister, Val Gibbons, actually. And he said, what do you think I should do, Val? Is there any consulting maybe in government? Because I was going to do a little bit of consulting. He said, why don't you go work with the small brewers? And I said, ah, oh, gee, I don't know if they're going to you know, go anywhere, even though I always had a, a, soft, spot in my, a soft spot in my heart for the, for the craft brewers when I was with Molson. In fact, I tried to get them to build a craft brewery at, couple points in time, and they eventually did. Uh, so I so no, went out and approached the industry on a, on a, a little consulting project, and then uh, at that time, Howard Thompson from Cremor, and John Wiggins was around, Howard Thompson was the, the, uh, the chair of the association, but they had no real uh, professional help, so. I must say, I saw him in the Edmonton airport on Monday. With his oh, dad. Yeah? He sends his uh, regards. Oh, thank you. So I haven't seen Howard. So Howard, so, so we, we worked on the tax project, and, and essentially there were uh, uh, 18 breweries in the province. Six were going out of business, and they did. That left 12, and I asked everybody what their net, you know, net worth was and whether they were making any money, and it, was, it came out to like minus 1.6 million or something. And, and the reason was there was no margin in the business. So uh, basically, to Howard's credit, I, I think he said, we, we've got to get tax breaks in Ontario, similar to what we have in, what they have in Quebec and in other places in the world. So that's the first thing we worked on. And I was the PC government at the time, and uh, everybody pulled together. We went to government, we got some good presentations, and we, did, and we did get that. And then they said, well, that's so great, let's try and do it Canada-wide. And... Um, there was already an association um, that uh, Unibrew had, had, had put together, and they had already had a, uh, a run at the Finance Committee, but they were using Quebec-style politics, which is very, very aggressive. And now we were trying to put a group together Canada-wide, and the other guys were uncomfortable with that. It was like super aggressive stuff. 
you know, attacking cabinet ministers publicly in the media, that kind of stuff. Uh, so we, we went on a slightly different tack, but they had done a lot of the groundwork. And then, so we put this group together um, Canada-wide. Uh, Gary was, was a big part of that. A um, couple of guys uh, uh, from out west and Laura Nowski in Quebec, who was a great, great leader. And she, she headed their association. And we got the, the uh, tax breaks Canada-wide on excise tax, so from $30 down to $5. So all of a sudden, people had money to invest and grow. And that started to bring people into the business. And then we got into the, um, the work with the LCBO that Cam talks about and did their strat plan, uh, which was great. LCBO, to their credit, funded a lot of that. They'd done the same thing with the wine industry. And, and Cam's right, that really got us in front of government. And we ended up getting a grant for a million dollars a year to the association for five years. And that, that's the marketing grant that's constantly been renewed. Um, and then in the early days, some of, some of the first people that helped us were Mary McIsaac, who was also in the wine industry, who's now with Loblaws, and uh, Lisa Dunbar. So we've had great people all along work with us, but she got us started on, on the internal branding. And then we've had uh, wonderful boards. So uh, Howard was the chair. He was a terrific chairman. Uh, Cam, was the, Cam was the next chair, then Gary, then Cam, then Garnet, and, and now Jeff, Jeff, the acting chair. And one of the, as we, as we got out and started to build the OCB brand, while we were protecting these tax breaks, because the majors were a little bit asleep when those went through, but they woke up. That woke them up. Um, so as we started to build, build the brand and started to grow, it, it was fabulous because all of the, the brewers that we had, but now there were 20 or 30, and the guys and the gals are all kind of rock stars in the industry. So you had Greg and Cam and you had uh, pe people like that. So when we got into the media, and Chris got us a ton of media, when we would get into the media, I could hang back. I didn't have to be the face of the industry with the consumer and with the, with the, with the media. I was with government. So we put these guys, these guys in the box, and we, we would have calls from the media, like two or three calls a week to go on TV or, 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 or do interviews. So we'd put all our, our brewers right in the box. They get media trained. We, uh, they get very good at it very quickly. And, and we had a great team to build the brand with. Um, and then the rest of the team, we got people like, like Bill and, uh, and and Allison and uh, and Drew and Dirk and, and Mark Benzik and, and the whole group that helped us, we had a very powerful, very competent team. And then we had a whole lot of people that came out of Molson's, like Billy Coleman and others and Dirk, and then a, a lot of people that came out of Labatt who really weren't that keen in the corporate world. And they, and Bill here, and they, they liked beer and they were passionate about beer and beer quality. So, they had just a tremendous amount of knowledge. So, so they helped us enormously, and they all fit into the culture that Matt so, so well described this morning. And, and in, in one of the things that government really loves, and, and Matt touched on this this morning, is, is the ability of, of our members or members to work together. So I, I, I kind of call it... Um, collaborative or cooperative capitalism, which is, it's, we could use a lot more of that instead of trying to eat each other alive. Uh, so all, all of those things worked, and the board and, and a number of people, Val was on, uh, Val Simpson was one of the first people on the board, and, and, and all of the other people that sat on the board were tremendous in being able to go into government for, for to talk to the media like we just talked about, but to go into government and bring a group into government and let them talk about their stories. So government really bought into the concept that we could create a lot of jobs. And we did. We were at two, three hundred when we started. And it's it's two thousand now, full time equivalents. And if you if you use a multiplier effect, that could easily be eight. So Scott's got an impact study on the way and that will, it's, it's the perfect time to do that, to start planning it under, uh, under Scott, and, and Jeff is gonna be fantastic. So, 
I think I'll just make a couple more comments, but what it, what it does show is that one person or two or three or four people, if they're focused and they keep going, can make a huge difference. Um, it, it can be done and it can always be done. There's always a better way, but you can always accomplish something if you really, really want to. Um, so a, a ton of people helped along the way that were very talented, great in the media, and uh, we, had, we had a great team. So, I mean, I, I did do some of it for sure, but there was, a, I had a huge, great resource to work with. Um, looking to the future, it's, it's fabulous. I just have to sit here and talk. Scott's gonna do all the work. He's gonna do everything. <laughs> Jeff is gonna sort out all those disputes, which we, <laughs> Yes, there are some uh, great discussions that take place because there are a variety of opinions. You saw some of it in some of the sessions today. But, but going forward, it's going to be, quality is going to continue, as Cam said at the last conference, to be of paramount importance. Uh, we cannot let that slip in any way, shape, or form. Uh, embracing all the new technologies that are out there is fabulous. Uh, Chris has, has done that with, you know, social marketing, I'm not sure how many Twitter followers we have now or Facebook followers, but it was 20,000 or some number like that. It's way up there. And so embracing technology, which will give you the same advantages today that only large organizations had before, that's gonna be very important. There's a tremendous number of brewers coming into the market. There'll be some shakeouts for sure, however, the premium price segment is still around 20 to 30 percent in Ontario, and that's kind of a standard number. So that's really the ballpark that we're playing in right now. And we're at something, I don't know, six or something with Mill Street out. There is huge potential to double or triple. Government is behind that. Um, so if you think you're getting crowded out, you're, you're not. The idea is just to make that whole segment grow. We may also, so, but there will be maybe a period of really tough competition, so everything that you see that's going to help you with, you know, energy efficiency, water utilization, that'll keep your costs under control are going to be enormously helpful. Really, really helpful because you're going to have to weather through this next phase. Um, it also depends on how the majors will respond, whether they, they've kind of tried to let's put these guys out of business, let's discredit them, let's do this, let's do that approach, and it doesn't seem to be working too well for them. So I think what you'll see them do, and I hope this is what you see them do, is they'll look at the margins, uh, which will be better for them if they can get into the business because they can spend more money on size and efficiency. And they may, in fact, decide to really promote the craft brand. They'll try and steal it from everybody, but their, their efforts may, may lift it up as well and just bring more attention to it. The beer store um, could be uh, a very, very useful next step. Scott's got tremendous relationships with them. That could be tremendous. It's got to be turned around a little bit. Ted's keen. He's on, he's on side for sure and the independent directors are terrific. There's huge potential in the beer store and grocery is just gonna keep on going. And LCBO has done a great job, so that, that'll continue. They, they may have to do some more work on brand building as opposed to just churn. Uh, so there's a tremendously bright future. Um, I'm thrilled with everything that we and I, we were able to accomplish and I'm even more thrilled that I can turn it over to a very capable group and uh, to a very capable new president and a wonderful team. And it's been fantastic working with people like, you know, Jeff is a young gun, uh, Bill is a, is a, you know, expert who knows everything, Cam is fantastic, you know, and, uh, people are, are everywhere. Noreen and Aldo are just, they make fabulous beer, they're the epitome of integrity. Ken is an institution in his own, and I can go on and on and on about practically everybody in the room, but you are really gonna be asleep soon, so I'm gonna, 
uh, stop at this point and just raise, raise a toast to the, to the new OCB. Here's to it, and it's going to be fabulous. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers, Tom. Well said. Well done, mate. Um, I'd like to invite anybody who's got uh, a story or an anecdote or something about John to come forward and maybe say something. So if you'd like to come on up. We do have extra mics. If you got a limerick, you might Those kiss. Are good pictures, though. <laughs> Those are very good pictures. Yeah, yeah, something written pictures. on a napkin, that would be okay as well. You seem to be stuck in time through all the pictures, too. It's, uh, you haven't changed a bit. Yeah, a lot of plastic surgery does that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good opportunity. What? Well, I was going to say it's a good opportunity for anyone who has any questions about anything OCB related to mm -hmm. fire them all right. Any questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. John, do you remember the first conference? Yep. <laughs> it was smaller than this. A little smaller. <laughs> so you, you have to thank Chris and, and Jenny for some of that and everybody else. What year? What year was that? The first conference? Yeah. Five years ago, Chris? Six. Six? 2011. The sixth conference. When was it? 2011? There you go. And it was small. And the girls that worked, worked it, incredible. It, well, it was small. You knew everybody that was there. Where was it, Christine? It was out in Markham, yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. And yeah uh, up on uh, Highway 7. Yeah. yeah. It was that hotel up on Highway 7? Long way to go from Port Credit. <laughs> <laughs> but there were some good slides and some really good uh, pie charts, exploded pie charts, so all, all kinds of good Matt information feels. and data out there. <laughs> and then the dance. And then the dance. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the one that had the dance. Oh, that was great. I was the only guy left with four women. <laughs> they were all married. That was, so was I. So. <laughs> But if you take a look at the difference <laughs> between five years ago and now, we've got all kinds of new brewers out there. There's all kinds of energy. There's all kinds of innovation, all kinds of interpretations of great beer styles. Mm -hmm. And we're all getting more awareness in the Ontario beer market. We're still on the growth path. And that's very, very important. And without John, that wouldn't have happened. No. People would still be drinking Probably would have some import beers and some big major beers. So. Um, thank you to John. That's so critical. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you, John. Oh, we do have a uh, Steve. Uh, would you like to come up and have, have an anecdote? Here comes Steve. Hard to see with the Steve, you come up on the stage here. Yeah, my, my, my challenge is uh, having known John for 11 years now is how to, how to come up with an ad anecdote. <laughs> as opposed to 4,000 of them. Um, but while I, while I was sitting there thinking, uh, one, one moment I, I think really sort of popped in my mind, and that was, um, uh, so the, the master framework agreement that, that got rolled out, uh, I guess yeah, close to two years ago now, um, the lead up to that was an intense time for the entire OCB. Uh, but in particular for John and, you know, the amount of, of lobbying that was being done to try to create change in Ontario was, was unprecedented and we could feel we were getting close and we, we got called into that sort of, that meeting with Ed Clark where we're going to find out what our fates are and I remember John sort of bringing us all into a huddle beforehand and saying, okay guys, no matter what they say, don't react. What we're going to do is we're going to say, let them talk. We're going to take 15, and, we'll, and let me say, we'll take 15 minutes, we'll walk out, and then we'll come back with our, these are all the extra things we want. And we all sort of locked hands and said, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. And so we sat down, and Ed Clark starts, starts his presentation. He's like, so we're going to give you sales in grocery stores. And we're going to force them to put at least 20% craft beer on the shelves. And jaws start, started dropping. And we're going to force the beer store to keep a certain amount of beer 
that's crap, and more jaws started dropping. And we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and I, I can't remember if it was John or Cam, but basically he finished, and they were just like, awesome. And there was, there, there was no let's go back for 15 minutes. There was, there was just absolute dumbfounded, just astounded at the amount of change that we had just helped to usher in. And I think we just all looked at each other and said, I can't believe we got half of that, a quarter of that. And I recognize we didn't get everything we wanted um, and we didn't get everything we asked for. But going into that meeting, if we, we would have, like, if we could have gotten one of those things, we would have been just happy with it. Uh, to get as much as we got and, and to see it happen. And just, just sort of that huddle before sticks in my mind. Okay, guys, no matter what they say, we're going to walk out and then just all of us going, okay. <laughs> It was, uh, it was a pretty magical moment for me to, to actually see that, you know, what we'd, what we'd said and what John had put forward uh, got listened to and, and, and we were all just amazed at, uh, at what, what, what was achieved there. So that was my, uh, my one anecdote. Every once in a while, I would really push John's buttons, and I remember one phone call where there was, I, I forget what the issue was, but something I just wouldn't drop, and I'm like, you and I finally gave up, and I think John thought that I'd hung up, and five minutes later, he's like, what a jerk. <laughs> and I, I thought that was hilarious, because I was still on the line. <laughs> He didn't say a jerk. I can't remember what he said. But yeah, I probably used a stronger word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tell you, but when, we still all get you, along. We still all trade beer, and we're all growing our businesses, which is so important. So uh, I, for one, am just like totally thankful. Um, and just it's an incredible industry. The, the sharing of knowledge, the people that we work with in this industry, the, the consultants that, that sort of help out uh, the way things are built and the way the growth track is going, it's pretty impressive. So there's 80 breweries as members of the Ontario Craft Brewers. There's a whole bunch more breweries out there we'd like to invite to join us. There's a lot of stuff to do and with the limited resources we have, we've done incredible things. So I'm very grateful. Once again, I'd like to give a round of applause to John. Thank you. Um, if there's no other uh, anecdotes from, oh, there, there could be, yes. John Mann has a question. question. Uh, fire it out. Could I take a stab at that? Um, so the question is, uh, well, did everybody hear the question? No, you have to. The, the question was what, you know, um, with the recent announcement of how the government in Ontario is going to handle cannabis sales, uh, where do we think um, the possibility for deregulation of, of beer sales is, is, is headed or, or going? Is that more or less the question? Yeah, um, I mean, we just got grocery, so I think you can see the government's mind is opening up. I, I don't see the uh, province of Ontario deregulating further than that. They'll continue to potentially issue more grocery, but I don't think you're going to see corner store anytime in the near future. In fact, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, but things can change quickly with government, as we know. Um, 
you know, the other thing, uh, you know, there was talk of craft brewers at some point having cooperatively owned stores, much like the beer store. I don't see that happening. I think you'll see them continue to leverage um, more grocery as a negotiating tool to keep the beer store in check to see if they're doing the things that they're supposed to be, that they said they're gonna do. Um, now we have an election coming up and you know, governments always have different ideas, but uh, the, the, the money, you know, the, the way that the deal is structured with grocery is, is pretty advantageous to the government. So I don't think you'll see them uh, after how many years uh, to get to that, I think it'll be a while before you see any other form. You know, they are loose with, or they are more open-minded with, with grocery. Also, we've seen them, you know, loosen the laws on additional uh, on-premise on stuff for brewers, which I think has been a, a, a great win for people with multiple locations. Um, they certainly, uh, you know, relax the brew pub stuff. So if you're a brew pub, you can sell beer offsite in retail. So. I think they've shown a lot of open-mindedness and, you know, relative to where, where we were. Um, but I don't think in the next five, 10 years, you're gonna see, um, I'm assuming, I mean, beyond grocery would be corner store. I don't think you'll see that. Right, right now, sorry, not to cut you off. Right now, the OCB, one of the cool things with beer and the whole kind of framework that we've kind of built over the history is the goal of having a brewery in every town and city. And with that, we have representation in every constituency across the province. And so craft brewers are one of the few industries that have, you know, we can, every brewery can go into their MP or MPP, and we have representation right across the province. And that's very powerful as an industry. Um, one of the things we're obviously undergoing right now is our strategic planning process. I'm not sure if you're involved in virtual, uh, virtual session or in sessions we had, uh, talks right across the province. Scott was at uh, the majority of them. Um, gathering what the association wants. Do we want to be GR related? Do we want to be, you know, marketing? What do we What do we want for the association? And so that's getting tabulated, put together, and will be uh, kind of uh, dispersed at the end of the year. And that will really kind of shape our message uh, going forward. So it might it might cover cannabis. It might cover something else. Uh, but we've taken that pulse, and we're kind of digesting that information right now through through our, uh, our strategic partner that we're using for that. So, um, yeah. You want me to make a couple comments? Sure. Yeah. I'll give you a couple of historical comments that might help you too. Um, when you're dealing with government, you can't ask for 15 things at once, so they'll take item 15 and give you that instead of item one, which you really need. That's exactly, that's exactly so, how it works. Yep. So for the last three or four years, the focus has been getting grants renewed and getting the retail system fixed. That was the heavy duty focus. Getting the retail system fixed worked for all members. It helped everybody. Um, getting the grants renewed helped all members, all size brewers, whether you're a member or not. This past year, we, we, the group said, the board and the members said, we'll focus on the tax phase outs, which may or may not mean anything to anybody, anybody. But there is a clawback such that when you're, when you hit 50,000, 75,000 hex, your profit as you grow will go through a cell valley like that and you'll sell more beer but make less money. And that's a huge problem because if that's not fixed, the leaders in the industry will get the rug pulled out from one of them. So for the last uh, year, year and a half, we've been working on that. We're still trying to get it through. So once that's through, then the strat planning exercise that, that, that everybody's undertaking can, can lead to what's going to be the next set of priorities. You know, uh, farmers markets is a small one. That almost definitely will go through. There, there will be other things that, that become very important besides tax. Tax will be important too. Um, so so there's, that's, that's for the next round of lobbying. As far as corner stores are concerned, this government, the Liberals will not put beer in corner stores. Uh, the PCs are different. They might if they get in, but they'd have to tear up a bunch of agreements and risk lawsuits and stuff, but you know, it, there's enough votes in it, they, they might, that's a possibility. But just the last thing on historically, the association was never lobbying for beer in corner stores. 
We lobbied for the right to have our own stores, which, which Cam, I think, alluded to, our own licenses and use that as a negotiating tool. And instead of that, we ended up with a beer and grocery store, et cetera. And last comment on this is government is, is, would, would find it incredibly unusual if we went back in and said, that's not enough when they haven't even finished implementing it and we haven't even finished digesting it. So we have to finish that for a couple of years and then everybody's got to figure out what's the next most logical thing to do. And this economic impact study is what leads into that. The strat planning that the guys are talking about, the economic impact is what leads into two or three years from now, what's the most important thing that needs to be done for the industry to keep growing. And it could be more deregulation in retail. So I hope that helps a little bit. Are there any other questions that anybody might have out there? Comments? Okay, so I think that wraps it up for the Pioneers panel for this year. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. I'd also like to thank our panel for uh, providing some really good anecdotes and helping from the field. And once again, a tremendous...